Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully, lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market was actually a tale of two markets last week. That was pre-Fed and post-Fed. The first two days of the week saw weakness as Apple cut prices in China and Russia cut gas to Europe. Uh, that had the markets nervous and news came out that new home sales crashed by 15%. Walmart warned and fell 9%. And also, Roku and Square moved to the downside as analysts lowered those stock targets. And social media was under pressure. But the second half of the week came after the FOMC meeting and that policy statement in, in Powell's news conference. Techs, they had already been strong as bad earnings brought rallies. And that really showed that a lot of the negatives had been baked in. The Fed did, as expected, raise rates 75 basis points, and Powell said that there would be no forward guidance. In other words, they were now data dependent. Yet, they were still projecting that short-term rates would go up, the Fed funds, to three and a quarter to three and a half percent. That's like another 75 uh, basis points to a full point by the end of the year, and then higher in 2023. Uh, he also said that they're not currently in a recession. Uh, and when you look at the report of the second quarter growth at, well, minus nine tenths of a percent, that is two quarters in a row of negative growth. That does meet the definition of a recession, but everybody out there is denying it, which is kind of a joke. Well, maybe it'll be a very shallow one. But it's going to be a while before any real growth comes to the to back to the markets. Uh, labor, well, he said, that's still very strong. And that certainly is the case with a 3.6% unemployment rate. But it was one word, one word during that news conference that set the market off, set it on fire. And that was the word normalized. Just absolutely amazing that the uh, market uh, had uh, been just waiting for one little t tip that there was something that had significantly changed. And uh, during that questioning, when he did use the word normalized, well, that really told investors that um, there was an all clear sign and that while the Fed may be still raising rates, they're probably going to go a lot slower and the S&P exploded. S&P finished that day on Wednesday up over 100 points. And then Thursday, there was a good follow through. And that came as Manchin and Schumer came to an agreement uh, on bills on health care, climate and inflation. The joke of it is that it's called the Inflation Reduction Act, when there's absolutely nothing in there that reduces inflation. There is a 15% uh, minimum corporate tax and then many other things in there where they're pouring money uh, over um, different aspects of the economy. Uh, but saying that reduces inflation is just wrong. But this did set a fire under the solar stocks on Thursday, which led the way up in the market as more of that government fairy dust now spreads over this group in that program. And I liked the solar group and talked about that it might be a very good group coming into later this year and in coming years. So and technically, uh, we liked it. And also for this reason that we thought that the uh, influence of government uh, and alternative energies was going in that direction. While there was a very big uh, pop to the upside, actually, we think it's really just the beginning. 
Friday, well, it was Apple and Amazon and, and Chevron and Exxon, all of them uh, reporting really strong earnings. The market popped uh, in a pretty strong way. Amazon up uh, 10, 11 percent on the day. Uh, and it was Amazon Web Services that saves the day for them uh, as that really uh, is exploding for them versus a very flat uh, retail segment of their market. Uh, Apple iPhone sales were strong and they beat and that stock rallied 3%. And the uh, CVX up 8%, Exxon up uh, 4% uh, as uh, really the market is now stampeding to the upside for the third day. The stock market rally came on time for our work. Uh, the rally came and moved through our upside targets and now we're looking at some higher targets and we'll show that in our S&P analysis uh, coming up towards the end of the show. Three weeks ago we showed the possibility of a 13% or more gain coming in a rebound and now it's just over 13% uh, percent for the S&P 500. Investors are piling in like it's a new bull market and they don't want to miss it. This happens at this stage of most bear markets. So far, we've seen a reset of valuations, but valuations are still very high. And what we've seen is earnings downgraded so much that bad actually looks good. Well, you know, coming up uh, is really a long period of stagflation, in our opinion. And that could go well into 23 as the economy is very slow and the Fed stays very tight. Uh, and uh, the reset that we think is in the markets uh, now and has been is very likely to continue. We're still looking for a rising market now, maybe another two or three weeks uh, with a little minor dip in the middle and then trying to go up again. We, we think it's probably in decent shape uh, all the way through mid-August. But this is that rally that I warned about will be a big hook because it looks so good. For the week, the major index is up 3.5 to 4%. Big move. Bonds, the 30s, up about 7 eighths of a point. Ten-year yields fall 11 basis points. And we think that yields are about to start ticking up a little bit in the bond market pulling down, coming really in the next one or two weeks. Gold market jumps $35. And silver, a huge rebound. About $1.70. Uh, that's a massive, what is that, 7 8% gain. Those all came right on time. This is that time frame that we were looking for the gold bottom. And for our members, I'm have, working on a big picture analysis for the gold and silver market that I'll be sharing with you sometime in the next week or so. So be sure to uh, watch that. That will, of course, be for level two, three, and four members. Dollar, that falls about three tenths of a percent. Uh, and we thought it was headed below 105. We still think so uh, over this next week. And it's very possible, looking at the, the information, the, the economic information that's coming out of Europe, that we're in a period now where it's going to be interest rates not going up so fast here in the U.S., and interest rates maybe picking up speed uh, in Europe, and uh, that would be putting pressure on the dollar. So uh, that, you know, of course, is a better environment for gold and silver. Uh, and uh, we think that for a little bit of time, the dollar will remain under pressure. Um, oil market, uh, it's uh, up more than $6, and this moved up right into our resistant sell zone, and uh, we think it is about to have a pretty good-sized pullback. But you really need to watch Future Speak uh, in order to see all of our analysis on all of our futures contracts. So that's it for the opening of the show. Um, coming up in this show, uh, Ivory is going to give you a preview of that Future Speak show uh, where we look at 24 different futures contracts. And he's going to preview the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar, that cash pair, and a great look at a short side setup coming using S Slim indicators. Katie is going to give you a great cycle analysis lesson uh, on a bottoming uh, square stock. And uh, you'll see why we have a long side bias in there and the target level. That it's likely to move up to. And then don't scroll forward. You can get Aslim content for free. Don't miss how to see how. That's coming up. What? Well, you just sign up now and you'll see it. No credit card necessary. 
and you're going to get more than two weeks of just the most popular services we have absolutely free. I'll show you that just coming a little bit forward here. So don't scroll past it. Um, and also, uh, we're going to give you our uh, stock market view, the short-term view, looking at SPY. How high can the rebound go? And then, how deep is the dip? All right, so uh, we're going to show you all that. And be sure that you go to AskLim.com. Uh, become a free member or a level one member, uh, and you'll get a good idea for the information that we share uh, at YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. Do give us a thumbs up. Like the video. Helps us with the algorithms on YouTube. And on Twitter, follow us at AskLim. Questions about our memberships, this free deal that we have coming up, uh, or any of our huge offerings of education and analysis, write to Matt at AskSlim.com. This is a preview of FutureSpeak. Every single Wednesday, we present our multiple time frame analysis, cycle analysis, on 24 different futures contracts, weekly and daily. Just amazing lessons that are done there all the time. You're going to get a hint of that right now by watching RV as he brings the analysis to you in the Aussie US dollar. Now let's look at the AUD USD. And as I highlighted, this market has been acting really nicely as per our weekly and daily cycle analysis. Minor cycle low formed on this minor third right here. You can see that's this sell off, nice tail, nice rally. That's that low right here. Now we're entering that period of heightened downside risk. As you can see, when you're in that last third of the cycle, you can get moves on the downside, as you can see right there, where rallies have failed. Every rally fails. So that's really what we are watching for here is for this rally to also fail and then move down into this time period, which is due 9.5 to. Uh, 1031 levels come in from 69.70 to around 70.50. That's where the uh, really where we'll be looking for this to fail from. And where are these levels drawn from? You can see if we draw from that cycle high on that minor cycle to that minor cycle low, that's where the 38.2 to the the 61.8 comes from here in the AUD USD. So look for that zone to to really be where this fails in, and then rolls down. If we switch to the daily chart, you'll see that this daily low formed just a little bit late, but overall, basically inside of the cycle timing window that we had here. Now, the reason that I highlighted that we like to see the daily ribbon turn negative again is because currently it's positive. So we need to see this obviously get into the zone as it did, but now roll down and start to make a series of lower highs and then lower lows. This is where it'll get more interesting if we do get this move into the zone, then form that lower low, and then the lower high, and then we'll be watching for this to be a short set idea. Currently, we have a mildly positive ribbon, a little bit choppy, but this is a ideal setup such as what happened here, right? We had this rally, the sell off, the, the turn down in the ribbon, the lower high, versus that old high and then the sell-off. That's really what we'll, we'll be watching for. You can see it once more right here. Lower high, bearish ribbon, bear flag, turn down. That's really what we wanna be watching for uh, right now in the AUD USD. That next low on the daily time frame is due right around the end of August to early part of September time period. So that's really what we'll be watching for right now is for the bear turn down in that daily ribbon, the lower high, and then a likely short side opportunity coming in the Aussie dollar, US dollar. Great work there, Arvi. Thank you for that. And here we go. We now have multiple time frame analysis in square SQ. Katie brings great lessons on a stock that we think has bottomed. So take it away, Katie.
Hi, this is Katie with Ask Slim. This week, the Cycle Low Timing Tracker is showing both of the payment processing companies that we follow on our Ask Slim focus list, PayPal and Square. They are both showing in the bottom confirmed category for the weekly time frame. Now, Square is also showing up in the Cycle Timing box for the daily time frame. It has a shorter daily cycle than PayPal, so although the analysis is similar for both of these companies, Square is the one we're going to focus on today. This is a 10-year weekly chart of Square. We have cycle brackets on the bottom that are 19 bars in length, and these cycle brackets represent an average ideal cycle. But we have how the actual cycles shaped up outlined in black around the candlesticks. The purple vertical lines show where the cycle lows occurred, and those can easily be compared to the ideal cycle brackets to get some idea of the consistency of the cycles. Two other aspects of cycle analysis are translation and configuration. Translation can be right hand or left hand and refers to where a cycle peak occurs. This is important because it gives us information about how long a symbol has to decline before it makes a cycle low. Look at these cycles over here with right hand translations. They only have a small amount of time for the declining phase and then they typically decline just a small amount. On the other hand, left-hand translations, like here and here, leave a long time to decline, and those declines are then typically much greater. In terms of configuration, cycles can be configured positively or negatively, and this refers to whether or not a cycle ends higher than where it began. Notice that both of these last two cycles are negatively configured. They end much lower than where they began. Um, this one right here turned around at the intermediate major 78.6% Fib, and this one at the 50% Fib extension level. Left-hand translations and negative configurations often go hand in hand. Now, when we have a negatively configured cycle, the probabilities favor the subsequent cycle not being able to take out that prior cycle high, but instead perhaps getting up into the resistance zone and having trouble getting through there. This resistance zone goes from about 91.5 on the bottom up to about 113.5 on the top. We also pay attention to momentum, and on our weekly charts, we use our proprietary reversal scout to show momentum. Notice how the reversal scout often turns purple shortly after a cycle peak occurs, and then it turns green again shortly after the cycle bottom. And that confirms the rising phase of the new cycle. We currently have a positive reversal scout. Switching over to the daily chart, I want you to notice these blue vertical dashed lines. Those represent a period of time around the ideal cycle bottom when we would expect a cycle low to occur. We are right in that time frame now and may have made our cycle low right here when Square tagged the middle of this support zone earlier this week. Now this cycle represents a basing cycle, which uh, is when we get a positively configured cycle after one or more negatively configured cycles. So in this case, the probabilities favor Square being able to take out the cycle high, which is here at 76.44. Now our targets for this next daily cycle are from about $82 to $86.33 up in the short-term target zone, with a more conservative target down here at the 61.8% Fib extension level at about 78.5. The momentum on the daily chart is positive with both the reversal scout as well as the slim ribbon which colors the candles red, gray, or green depending on momentum conditions. And our slim ribbon PO is also giving a momentum continuation signal to the upside, though we are getting a little bit of weakness coming into the market now at the time of this recording uh, due to the GDP numbers. So our sum of the evidence approach suggests a long side bias in Square. Just be aware that earnings is coming up next week. If you'd like to learn more about cycle analysis and all our tools and services, please visit our website at askslim.com. Great work on that. As always, boy, that cycle low tracker is just a great tool. Uh, and Katie can give you a lot more information about that in our Discord channel. Announcing our once a year special, the Ask Slim Popular Services Preview. 
You can sign up for that right now. It's going to start on August 5th and run through August 26th, where you're going to get so many of our most popular premium services for free with no credit card required. All you have to do is sign up. You can do that right now by going to the front of the AskSlim.com website, and you will see the area where it says that you could sign up right there in the middle of the page. You're going to get our stock index report. That's the SIR daily snapshot. Amazing information on the indexes and all of our time frames with our very proprietary charts. You're going to also get our SIR interday live stream. That is a live uh, chart that w we broadcast that gives you our interday information, which is great for interday short term traders. You're going to get our S&P 500 multiple time frame chart stream that has all of our proprietary indicators on it live in, of course, multiple different time frames from weekly all the way down to 15 minutes. You will get our trade ideas, our future speak show, which is done every Wednesday on 24 different futures contracts. You'll get the Slimulator Bull and Bear Ranking System on the 84 best symbols that we look at. Uh, with amazing information, the Slimulator Momentum Tracker, which is for longer term holders on over a thousand different stocks and ETFs. You're going to get our ever expanding Discord community server. We have live things going on there all the time. You can ask questions. It's amazing. And our new cycle load timing tracker. Uh, just a great job that Katie does with that. And also our new futures and equities and ETF hubs. There's all this tons of information all in one place and so much more this all could be available to you for free and you don't need a credit card we're doing this because we want you to see the amazing work that we do and then of course you'll sign up for a premium membership if you think this is a great fit for you there are of course uh, four different levels at askthem.com and there's one that fits great for you and you can get a great look at this uh, for from August 5th all the way through August 26th at no cost at all. Please go to AskLim.com, go to the middle of that front page, and you can sign up right there. Thank you very much. I think you're going to love it. All right, stock market, S&P 500, short-term view. Uh, we're going to look at this, uh, and I'm going to do a little bit of teaching around this, and you'll be able to see uh, why we thought that the market was going to rally, uh, and how far we thought it was going to rally, and now, as it's done really well, we've, we've raised the targets a bit, and I think that you will see uh, what we're looking at here. But first, I want you to see what it looks like with really no analysis on it. This is the SPY. Uh, happens to have uh, on, our, on the bottom here our slim ribbon PO, which is an amazing indicator. And the slim ribbon is on the chart right over here. So we're looking at a daily chart here, and we're going back here all the way into uh, October of 21. So there is a rhythm here in this market uh, that is really clear. And it's clear when you have uh, an experienced eye to look at it. Uh, and uh, when I put up this analysis, you're going to really see as this pops out at you. So this is just a, you know, a plain candlestick chart. And I'm going to move in here our daily cycle analysis and watch this. Bam. There you can see how the rhythms in the market are just extremely clear. And what we see in here is a market that is improving and changing. Let's take a look at this one, two, three, four, five, six cycles. A cycle is measured from trough to trough. It is a repeating length of time from the point of origination, as you can see. And this right over here is a 34-day chart, a 34-day cycle. It's broken up into some minor halves that aren't perfectly timed, but they're pretty good. Uh, and overall, uh, you get some really good information. Now, these arrows over here, what this is meant to show you is that it is a positively configured cycle and the point where it actually peaked. And you can see there, this is called a right-hand translation. 
where it rallies and all the way through the right side of the cycle and then it corrects and it's green upward arrow because it's a positive cycle. This one started out doing as it should. Once you get a positive cycle, you, the next cycle should be uh, where it makes a new high. And it did that perfectly. You can see in here the slim ribbon gets positive and then all of a sudden here it gets negative. When it breaks under this level right over here, that is a breakdown and that is negative. And you can see in here that from this point right there is where the cycle peaked and then came down and made a lower low. That is a negatively configured cycle. The odds are high that the next rally would fail in resistance and then give you another negatively configured cycle. You had uh, these one, two, three, and four negatively configured cycles in a row. And all of that was in this declining phase. And each of these times that you got these red downward arrows were signals of downward momentum resumptions. And that was periods like right in here where it kept bringing downside markets. As you can see, that is the slim ribbon PO. That is an, a proprietary indicator. So now I'm just going to zoom in here at these last couple of cycles that you can see. There's that negative cycle right there. Uh, that uh, uh, brought uh, the bottoming going on here. Now this is also where that weekly minor cycle bottomed for those of you that are following our cycles. And here you can see the minor cycle and the minor cycle right there and then the minor one here. But look that this, this actually closed higher than where it started and it brought you to a new high. And the slim ribbon went positive, the slim ribbon PO went green. All of that gave you this positive look. Now, this is what's really so important. And that is, as we had projected that the S&P was going to get up to uh, maybe as high as 405, 406. Well, here we are right now with it around 410. So it has done better. And there is a resistance zone right off of here that comes off of the weekly chart. And that's right in here from about, let's say, 413 to about uh, 425. So right now, this is rising, but you can see that it's late right in here. And just like you saw right over here when it was late, all of a sudden, the last five, six days had a big sell-off. Well, we're getting into that period right over here, but this cycle really looks like it wants to configure in a positive way. You can see that it looks really pretty clear uh, when you look at that. And there is, I'm just going to bring this in one more time so that you can get a good idea of where we are right now and what these projections are. And that is that the, uh, th this cycle is likely to come down into this retracement area. Now the minor retracement area is 396 to 391. The short-term retracement area is kind of in the middle of that, 393, down to about 387. This looks like over here, over, we're going to say the next five to eight trading sessions, that it's likely to find some resistance in here and some profit-taking, bringing it down here. But this is actually a short-term buy zone, because this will then be a positive cycle. And it says that you will get a rally. So you see there's two projections up in here. One of them is that it gets up to the bottom of the resistance there at about 4.13 uh, after this correction. And this is a, uh, these retracements right now are rising because we haven't quite made, made a high anchor point. And then after that, uh, the rally to 4.13 could go up here to 4.25 on the S&P 500. Now let me tell you that these do not affect the negative scenario on the longer term perspective. This is all positive right in here, but living within intermediate and longer term negative conditions. It makes for the potential for a big upside move. And when you get these big upside moves in here, like you see right there, which is really, you know, uh, when you look at this chart, it doesn't look that much like a stampede. But, you know, when you get a, a rally in here that's uh, up a couple hundred points in three days, 
uh, in the S&P 500. That's a huge rally. So, you know, the retracement in here is likely to come down here. Often this limb ribbon gives you the support area right there. So that's coming up into a similar area. So we'll look for that pullback. We'll just say like five to eight days right in here and then moving up again. So for those of you that are short-term traders, this is really likely to, op uh, to give a buying opportunity and then moving up into that range that we're talking about right there. 413 to 425 is a likelihood looking at that. That is the short term view, and that is what looks, what shows you the beautiful cyclical patterns that are in there and the harmonics of the, uh, of the intermediate, of the, uh, uh, of the dominant and the minor cycles that are pretty clear in there. And when you get into the period of these, uh, minor cycles, uh, in which uh, they look like uh, they are lining up with the dominant cycle, you end up getting into a period where there could be um, some corrections going on. So you see that right in here where that they were lining up and you've got that correction. You see that right in here where they're lining up and you've got that correction. You see that right in here. You see that right in here. All of that. I mean, it's pretty clear looking at that. And then there's another one right in here. But we're giving it only that minor little decline because all of that is suggestive of the fact that the um, uh, upward uh, upward momentum has changed, momentum on the intermediate is positive, and all of that is saying that just look for that little dip. Timing-wise, that we're looking for in the early part of August, we had been looking for that all along, not uh, you know not realizing or guessing that it would get up as high as we did in the S&P, but it's still there. Uh, but the upward momentum is so strong, we think it's going to be minor, uh, and that would be a buying opportunity. So before I, whoop, didn't mean to do that. Uh, before I get too far uh, past this right over here, uh, remember that you can learn about cycle analysis at AskSlim.com, and that will give you uh, a, a look at what we do here. Uh, just go to the uh, cycle analysis workshop at the top of the page uh, and there's a free video in there and all the information on doing this style of analysis. That's it. Uh, I hope that you found that just absolutely valuable. Remember that you can get uh, uh, practically everything that people love that we put out for free right now. Uh, it begins uh, August 5th through the 26th but now is the pre sign up period uh, where you can uh, get all of these 10 different areas on our website and services, amazing, uh, with no credit card necessary. Just go to the uh, Aslin.com website and uh, look where it says uh, to sign up. You sign up in advance and you'll be sent a password uh, for the August 5th period and you're going to get practically three weeks uh, of our uh, just amazing content at absolutely no cost to you, no risk, nothing required from you. Just give us uh, your email and then we will be uh, letting you in for free. Uh, just amazing. So that's uh, it. I hope you found everything that we're, we did in this show just great. Don't forget to go to our website, AskSlim.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Give, uh, click that notification bell and give us a thumbs up. On Twitter, follow us at AskSlim. And uh, for in, any information on all of the memberships and our specials uh, that we're running, uh, please do write to Matt at AskSlim.com. That's it. Uh, I want you to be so incredibly careful. It is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the city and I'm going to do a city show.